And uh, first of all, I would like to apologize to uh, all of you that I have not done with grading your test yet. Uh, I haven't even started, to be honest with you. Uh, I have a couple students actually taking the test, um, doing a makeup test, and one of them doing it very, very late. And uh, with uh, the excuse that he had COVID, so I waited for him. And then uh, it was done this Sunday. And when I, uh, that day, I was not feeling well at the same time. So basically all my grading, not only your class, but I have two other classes get postponed. Uh, I finished the other class yesterday and I plan to finish yours today. So uh, if you don't get my, your test back tomorrow, uh, please uh, remind me. Okay, somebody need to uh, somebody need to kind of like counter me, uh, remind me. Though, okay, now when I return your test, it it will be at the comment section of your submission. When uh, remember when you submit the test, there's uh, you can put some comment there. Now, if you can put comment there, then I can put comment also, right? Now that's where I actually put it. Okay, uh, that's one, and then second. Uh, we have a quiz. I post a quiz four, five, six. Four, five, six. Do is I think I should say it is do, huh? Not do's. Uh, is do this Saturday. And I make it midnight. So almost almost going to almost going to sunday but please don't wait until last minute to do that right okay uh i mean i the you if you postpone you keep if you keep on postponing it then there's no that deadline will be enough because you keep on postponing it anyway okay the deadline supposed to be this thursday but then i feel like ah uh, you know it's way too close uh then i give you extra two, two more days plus many hours but uh the thing is, your test is next uh, next Thursday, not this Thursday, but next Thursday, nine days from now. And if you if we postpone the submission of this quiz, then I basically have even less time to do the grading, and I cannot give you the feedback uh, by the time you take the quiz. So my concern is the reason I chose that Saturday evening to be the deadline, so that on Sunday I can grade it. And then hopefully on Monday, I can give it back to you already. Okay, so uh, please don't miss this one though. Now, uh, from this quiz four, five, six, uh, you will see uh, question number one may not be doable at this point, but after today, after this class, uh, it should be doable already. Now the latest, it should be doable on Thursday. Okay, the latest. On Thursday, we will hit that question number one very hard. Uh, however, question number two and on on this quiz is already doable. Okay, maybe I write it down. Question number one may not be doable. Until Thursday. This Thursday. But I know question number two and on. are doable already. Okay. In a second, I have a chat coming in. Okay. Is there no time limit on studying the doable question? What do you mean by no time limit? Like if we, if I, if I start the, the question right now, uh, I can keep I can I can try working them until before Thursday midnight. Uh, actually, the deadline is Saturday. Oh, I, that, that's what I meant. Saturday. Yeah, you can start working on that though. I mean, I mean, uh, what I what I want to say is this: uh, there are how many questions there? Let's say number one, number two, up to number. Uh, let's say up to number five. Okay, up to number five. Now, you can do this already. Okay, then start working on that right now. Okay, yeah, number one is not doable yet until Thursday maybe, and you can wait until Thursday to do number one, but number two to number five, you can start working on that right now. Uh, but for sure that all of these should be submitted by Saturday. 
Do you see what I mean? Okay, in that quiz four, five, six, uh, anybody look at that already? How many questions there? Is it five question or six question? I think six question. It could be six question. I don't it's know. Five questions. Five questions. Okay, then two, four, two, three, four, five already doable. So uh, after two, after this uh, lecture today, you for sure can do number two, four, five, two, three, four, five already. Even number one, even number one. At this point, you can do part A and part B. The x intercept and the y intercept. The, the that Mickey Mouse question thing. Okay. Yeah, and then. Uh, so basically, uh, if I were you, I will not wait until Thursday, then start working on the, the, the quiz, you know, okay? And uh, I believe I said this before, let me remind you again, that when it comes to my quiz, I do allow you to work together as long as you write your own, as long as you write your own uh, solution, okay? So if you have friends, you chat behind me, uh, how to do this, how to do that, go ahead, I don't mind, you know? because it could be the way you study from other friends. But at the same time, I hope you have in mind that uh, that quiz is actually also to prepare you for your test. Okay, so do not think that, that the, the, your test will be like at that quiz because your test, in your test, uh, you need to be able to think independently. Okay, yeah. uh, the, the goal is not that you cheat and get a better grade, no, no. It's more about you work together and then through that working together, you study. Okay, yeah. in the end, I want you to be able to do it on your own. Now your test tool material, your test tool, which will be uh, next week, today is the 20th, on the 29th, on the October 29th, uh, covers from 1.7, as I remember, is it 1.7 or 1.6? Yeah, 1.7 from 1.7 up to 2.5 which we will cover today okay now the thing is up to this 2.5 there's a little section plus uh, topics in quadratic function in quadratic function which our textbook does not cover Okay, with topics in quadratic function, which uh, I would say that uh, that's actually, you can see that in 3.1. Okay, so after this 2.5, I go back to 2.4 a little bit for piecewise defined function. And then I go to 3.1. What I will do is 2.5, let me write it down. 2.5 and then 2.4 part B uh, a piecewise defined function, which I didn't cover last time. And then from there, I go to 3.1. Okay, once I'm done with 3.1, then I go back to 2.6, 2.7. But your test one basically ends here. I mean, test two. Test two ends here. You see the cutoff, okay? Now, in other words, after today, after today, you have only one section that you have not done, which is 3.1, okay? Any questions so far? You're good? Now, uh, I hope Nobody needs to have extra time anymore uh, for this test too. Okay, like when you turn it in, don't wait until like you have only 10 minutes left, then you start wrapping up, taking pictures and convert that to PDF. No, give yourself 15 minutes. Okay, give yourself 15 minutes. Okay. I really have hard time to take students late work. Okay, if you're only five minutes late, I don't mind. Actually, I don't mind, but the person who are who is five minutes late, uh, 
actually becomes an excuse for somebody being 11 hours late. You know, okay, so please don't let it happen anymore. Okay, yeah, I can, I honestly, again, I myself, like, I don't mind if you are just five minutes late, but the thing is, like, uh, other people can use that as an excuse to further being further later, you know, and I, I don't like that. I feel like I, uh, my generosity being, being, uh, being abused, being taken advantage of. Okay. And if that's the case, then, uh, what's the point of being nice to one person if other people take advantage of me, right? Okay. Uh, I try to be nice to my students too, but <laughs> some people just not uh, out of not reasonable at all. Okay. Uh, okay, let's start with this lesson today. Today we will cover especially, we did a little bit of the up, down, left, right. Okay, and we will focus on uh, these three before we go to 2.4b. Okay, but let's review a little bit. Uh, for example, for example, suppose I have uh, fx let fx let fx equals to uh, square root of x plus 3 minus 4. Now, you will see that what happened here is you shift to the left. Shift 3 you need to the left. And this guy here, you shift four units down. <clears throat> so if I grab my graphing paper, so I grab my graphing paper, put it here, oops. Okay, now then, originally, originally, uh, it's supposed to look like this. The vertex, the uh, starting point is zero, zero, and then up one, right one, up two, right four, up three, right nine, right? Supposed to look like this. Okay, now then, uh, what we need to do is we move this, all this structure here, three units to the left, four units down. So it will start here, okay? The points that you originally have here, now it moves here. Are you with me? Three to the left, four units down. Now then, the coordinate that you originally have here, you move three to the left, four units down. So. Uh, eventually, you will see that we start from this coordinate here. You go up one, right one. The same movement you got from here, up one, right one. And then from that quote unquote new vertex up to right four. Right? And then up three, right nine. So the new, uh, the new function that we are trying to graph now looks like this. Okay, this is y equals to square root of x. This is y equals to square root of x plus three minus four. Is it okay, everybody? Nobody saying anything. Okay, let's go on. Example two. Suppose I have let fx equals to absolute of x minus 2 minus 5. Can you describe for me what is the basic function? What is the parent function, the basic function? The shape of this function will be the same to the shape of what graph? Basic graph. 
absolute of x that's right that's from the chat absolute of x okay so for us to be able to graph this function you need to know the base the shape of the basic function absolute of x and then the second what do we do with this how about the transformation move left or right If you replace x in that absolute sign becomes x minus 2. You move to the left or to the right? You move to the, to the right. When you replace x by when you replace x by x plus 3, like in the first example, it's a move root left. Three to left. The thing of it is, if you play the movie, you play the movie three units earlier, so it starts earlier. Okay. Now, but if you replace x by, if you replace x by x minus two, you replace x by x minus two, then it will move right. Okay, you move two units to the right. And then after you move two units right, you move five units to the uh, move five units. Down, that's correct. Now, so what happened to the vertex? The vertex originally, now goes to, if you move two units to the right and five units down, the vertex becomes, what is the new coordinate of that vertex? Two comma negative five, that's right. Because two units to the right, five units down okay now with that then we put them in graph the vertex is now two comma negative five this is a new vertex okay and then from that new vertex we follow the graph of that absolute x one to the right up one to the right up two three to the right up three right and then also to the left it has this shape. So when I pull the line, it talks to me like this. That's what it looks like. Now, actually, we can put more details into this. For example, I can ask you, for example, what is the domain of this function? An absolute sign has domain or real numbers. Okay, how about the y-intercept? Uh, from the graph, you see the y-intercept is 0, negative 3. Okay, but can we find it out algebraically by algebra? To find the y-intercept, you find what you replace x by zero, absolute of zero minus two minus five. Zero minus two is negative two. What is absolute of negative two? That's two minus five, that's negative three. So we confirm our y-intercept is zero comma negative three. Okay, when I ask you the y-intercept, I need you to show me how you uh, do the computation algebraically, not from your graph. In fact, we get the y, the, 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 the graph from the algebra work to find this y-intercept. In other words, in other words, the, done, the work should be done this way. You should do the analysis first, and then from those analysis, you get this graph, not the other way around, okay? We get this and then use it there. That's what it's supposed to be.
Okay, the third one, uh, how about the X intercept? To find X intercept, we set the Y equals zero and then solve for X. Now we have done this even in test one, right? So absolute of blah equals to five means blah equals to five or blah equals to negative five. Blah equals to seven, blah equals to negative three. So the X intercepts are seven comma zero, negative three comma zero, which we have confirmed. You can confirm from your graph, seven comma zero is here. Right, negative three comma zero is there. Okay, and we know part D, for example, the axis of symmetry. Originally, axis of symmetry is x equals to zero because we move it two units to the right, then the axis of symmetry becomes two. The third hex, we have seen that earlier, two to the right, five units down, that's two comma negative five. Now, my next question here, I want you to help answer me this. What is the range of this function? Originally, absolute of x has the range, the range is from zero to infinity, right? From zero to infinity. Now, because when you move left, right, it doesn't change the range. When you move up down, it will change the range. Okay, then the range will be bracket, not uh, not braces, bracket, including negative five up to infinity. Okay. So this is the type of details I would like you to show me in your test tool later on uh, when I ask you to graph the function. Okay, so. Uh, what I teach you here, uh, this section, is the graphing part only, only the graphing part. But the details that we do earlier here is something we have done in many, many sections before. Okay, we talk about domain in one section. We talk about finding x, uh, y intercept in another sec section, finding x intercept actually in chapter one. Axis of symmetry, we know it by from 2.4. The vertex range also from 2.4. Okay, so what happened later on is I will ask you a question. Uh, I, let's say I give you a function and for you to, I ask you everything from that function, which requires you to know uh, multiple sections all at once. Now it's actually not hard. It's just little bit, little bit here, a little bit there all put together. Let's do more. Another example. Example three, let's say we have let fx equals to uh, x plus two squared minus, mm, minus four. What is the basic function? That's the shape, the shape is parabola. But the basic function is? X squared. X squared. Okay, and then what do you do to that X squared? Move two to the left. Okay, and four down. Okay, so from there you will see that the vertex will be originally the vertex is zero, zero, right? Originally the vertex is zero, zero. Now it becomes negative two comma negative four. Okay, that's the new vertex. And likewise, the axis of symmetry will be, it is a vertical line, x equals to negative two. 
Now you can see the negative two actually from the X component of the vertex. Now let's put the work in detail. Let's put the work in detail. For example, part A, what's the domain? Well, it is a polynomial, so the domain will be all real numbers. It's a quadratic one, right? Second, how about the y-intercept? Y-intercept, you replace x by zero. Okay, so the y-intercept is zero, zero. Okay, how about the x-intercept? We set the y equals to zero and then solve for x. I square root of p. So plus minus two equals to x plus two. This is correct here, solving the question. So negative two plus minus two equals to x. So x one is negative two plus two, that's zero. That's zero x for zero y, and x two is negative two minus two. That's negative four. That's negative four on zero. So we have the domain y intercept, x intercept. Part D axis of symmetry is we have that earlier x equals to negative two because we move two units to the left. Part E how about the vertex? The vertex is negative two comma negative four. Two units to the left, four units down. Now because of that, then what's the range? We know the parabola will open up, right? Now the vertex now is negative two comma negative four. Approximately like this. So what is the range? The range will start from negative four all the way to infinity, right? Okay, from negative four, including negative four, all the way to infinity. Now let's put them in picture. The vertex is negative two, negative four. X intercepts, Y intercept is zero comma zero, X intercept zero comma zero, negative four comma zero. Axis of symmetry, X equals to negative two. And this is the vertex, right? Now, can you get more coordinates from here? Then you remember the graph of X squared. From the vertex, move one to the right, up one. One to the left, up one. Two to the right, up four. Two to left, up four. Three to the right, up nine. Three to the left, up nine also. By the way, it must be symmetric. Right, it must be symmetric. So from then here, we can graph the parabola. That's what the problem should look like. Now, if you uh, don't print your paper out, if you don't have printer and in your test you don't print it, then you need to give me the coordinate here. So you need to give me negative two, negative four, negative one, negative three. You name it, name the coordinate. Okay, one comma five. This is negative four comma zero, negative three comma negative three, negative five comma five. Okay. Imagine if you don't have this, uh, if you don't have this. 
Now, that's what it should look like. Okay, if you don't have graphing paper, then you need to also give me the coordinates of those points, not just put the point. No, not just put the point. You need to give me the coordinate also. Okay, and of course the rectangular uh, coordinate system, the axis, y axis, x axis. You need to give these. And then these. Okay, you need to give that. If you don't print it out, therefore you don't have the graphing paper. Okay, but of course I prefer it to have crafting paper so that you don't need to uh, spend time. Once you have crafting paper, then the way you plot the coordinates tells me the core, the location already, the coordinate. Okay, but if you don't have crafting paper and you don't give me this red, uh, the, the, the coordinate, then I don't know where is that coordinate actually. It's just, you can just give me a point, but you don't know where, you don't tell me where that is. Okay, now so far we already have three examples of left, right, up, down uh, uh, work. Next one, uh, part C, reflect with respect to X axis. What we know from the past to reflect with respect to y uh, x axis, you change the y becomes negative y. All right? Okay. So uh, suppose we have a function y equals to f x. Y equals to f x. Then the reflection reflecting that with respect to the y, uh, x axis. You replace y becomes negative y. Okay. Now, or basically, you will see the resulting function is the opposite of the original function. Okay. So, for example, for example, let's say we have fx equals to negative absolute of x plus 2 absolute of negative of absolute x plus 2 now the way we will work on this is uh, ask yourself first what is the graph of x plus 2 absolute of x plus 2 now putting negative in front of that will reflect that upside down with respect to the x axis okay so this will look like this approximately. So the one here will make it upside down. Does it make sense? Okay, now suppose uh, out of uh, for fun, I actually go further, I say F3. F3. And when you add three means you move up three units, right? From there, you move up three units. So negative absolute of X plus two, negative absolute of X plus two plus three is basically two to the left, upside down, up three. So later on the graph will look like this. Now, of course, you do this red color on your scratch paper. Okay, you do that red color in your scratch paper. Now, then, uh, if we go to detail, what's the domain? The, the domain is all real numbers. How about the y intercept? You can compute it yourself. Okay, so f0 equals to what? You will see that's equals to 1. So y intercept is zero one. How about x intercept? We set the y equals to zero and solve for x. So absolute of x plus two equals to three. 
So x plus 2 equals to 3, x plus 2 equals to 3, so x equals to 1, x equals to 5. So x intercepts are 1 comma 0, negative 5 comma 0. I know I'm a bit fast. You can just do it yourself later on. Okay. And then part D, the axis of symmetry, we see how it moves. It moves to the left two units. So X equals to negative two. Part E, the vertex is now what? Two to the left, upside down, up three. Negative two comma three, right? If you wonder how to get the vertex beside uh, by from the, the, the transformation, you can also do it this way. Notice that the the axis of symmetry is x equals to negative two. You can plug that into the function f negative two equals to negative of absolute negative two plus two plus three. Okay. So that's how I use that x equals to 2 to get my y equals to 3. That's how we get that. Okay. Now then, how about the graph in detail? The vertex is, what is that again? 2 to the left, upside down, up 3. Now, supposedly, the graph supposed to look like that if you don't, if you don't make it upside down. And that's what it looks like, right? But if since you make it upside down, then uh, instead of going up one, when I move one to the right, instead of up one, I go down one. Two to the right, go down two. Three to the right, go down three, and so on and so forth. So this will be the graph. And you can confirm with, for example, the y-intercept is here, right? And the x-intercept is here, 1, 0, and then negative 5, 0. Okay, let's use by hand. That will, this will be the graph. Now your turn. Let me ask you to try just the graphing part, just the graphing part, just the graphing part. For example, example five, graph f x equals to negative of x minus one squared plus three. on the graphing paper. Now, if you don't have your graphing paper, then you sketch that yourself, okay? But the question I need you to answer me is, uh, for example, the domain is already always real numbers. Uh, I need you to be able to plot on that graph the y-intercept, the x-intercept. Now, in this case, you will see the x-intercept is ugly. Ugly number, not a nice number. Okay, and then uh, where's the axis of symmetry? How about the vertex? And then I need you to give me five important coordinates. One of them is vertex. in that graph. Now, once you are able to imagine the graph, uh, you should be able to tell what's the range for this quadratic function. Okay, let me give you one, two, three, maybe three or four minutes from now. Okay, let me start.
I know you may not be done yet, but at least uh, you get some feeling about this. The domain is uh, all real numbers. Uh, do you get the wine for set, by the way? I think that's zero two. Right? I think that's zero two. The x intercept I know will be ugly. Zero three? No, it's zero two. When x equal to zero, I get negative of uh, zero minus one squared plus three. That's zero negative of negative one squared plus three. That's negative one squared is one. So that's two. Okay. The x intercept uh, that will be quite an ugly number such that we cannot use that to graph. But at least we know what the x intercept should be. It will be it will be one plus radical three comma zero, one minus radical three comma zero. Don't need to make it into decimal, just leave it like that. Okay. If you want to see the work, uh, you set it equal to zero. And it's already completed. Uh, it's already a perfect square, right? So I just go on from there. So x equals to one plus minus square root of three, right? That's to get the x-intercept. Axis of symmetry will be x equals to one, right? And the vertex is one comma three, right? Let's go. To that vertex, one comma three. Now we know because of this negative, and you make it upside down, right? Okay. So instead of one, you need to write we go up one. Instead of going up one, multiply by negative one. You flip it upside down. It goes here. Okay. And at the same time, we actually confirm that our y-intercept zero two is actually part of the important coordinates. Okay, from that vertex, when I move two units to the right, I go down four, supposed to be go up four, but because of the negative, I go down four. Three units to the right, supposed to go up nine, now I go down nine. So this will be the graph of the function. is the axis of symmetry x equals to one. Okay, now from what we see here that, we, from what we see here, notice that this is the x intercepts, right? From what we see there, the x-intercept here will be two point something comma zero, right? And the one here, it will be, the one there will be negative zero point something. That would be negative zero point something. Negative zero point something comma zero. Okay? Now, how do we confirm that we did it right? Then you compute this by calculator and see that the positive one, it will be two point something, and this guy here will be negative zero point something. Okay. Let me ask you to do one more. This time is actually uh, a bit more difficult. But if you have your, if you understand it, then it won't be too hard. Uh, let f x equals to five minus square root of x minus maybe plus uh, three.
Maybe don't make it five. Make it two. Change this to two. Change that to two. One of the first question will be, what is the domain? It's not all real numbers because you need to look at inside the radical. This guy has to be non-negative. Right? X plus three has to be at least zero. Okay, and then uh, how about the Y intercept? How about the X intercept? How about the quote unquote, the vertex? I call that vertex but you can understand it as the starting point. And then of course, from there, you can also can find what's the range before you actually graph it. has to be greater or equals to negative 3. So the domain will be starting from negative 3 to infinity. The y-intercept, that will be an ugly number. When x equals to 0, I get 2 minus square root of 3. How to plot that on your uh, on the coordinate system? Then you can use your calculator to get the decimal. Okay, x-intercept, x-intercept. Let me do it underneath here. Get the y equals to zero. Isolate the square root. Notice that isolating square root to solve a square root equation is something we learned long time ago in chapter one. So all of a sudden in this section, we put everything together. All those little details that we did before, now we put them together. Okay, so I square both sides. So the x intercept is one comma zero. The starting point. Three to the left. So originally square root of x looks like this. Three to the left, upside down, up two. So that's the starting point. Okay, let me give you the idea again. This is square root of x, three to the left, upside down, up two. Okay, so approximately that's what it looks like. Okay, that's the starting point. Now then, instead of going up one right one, because we make it upside down, we go down one right one. Down two right four. I hope then you confirm, oh, my x-intercept is 1, 0. Okay. Down 3, right 9. That's what it looks like. Okay. Now from here, you also see that the y-intercept is between zero and one. It's slightly above, it's slightly above the x-axis. Now then you can use your calculator to compute using your calculator what will this be in decimal. Okay, I think it's around 0 0.3 or 0 0.4. If you score, uh, that will be zero comma 0 0.3, I think. But that's basically what the graph will look like. Okay. Next, part D. Reflect with respect 
pull y axis to reflect with respect to y axis we replace x becomes negative x reflecting x becomes negative x oh. uh, this part here is a bit more difficult to understand okay. so let me do a small examples here in a second Uh, let's see, you know, uh, one of the most simplest reflection with respect to y-axis is this one, y equals to square root of negative x. And when I first, usually when I first uh, bring, put this on the board in class, students say, oh, Thomas, you cannot have that kind of function. Why? Because inside the square root, you cannot have negative. Inside the square root, you cannot have negative. That's true. but negative x is not necessarily a negative number negative x is not necessarily a negative number in fact if you think about this the domain will be okay, negative x has to be greater or equal to zero multiply by negative one x is less than or equal to zero so the domain is negative infinity up to zero so we may have that kind of function, but how do we graph this actually? This is starting from square root of x. Let's start from square root of x, right? Square root of x look like this. This is square root of x. Okay, now then when you replace x by negative x, when we replace x by negative x, then you reflect this with respect to the y-axis, so we get these coordinates. This is the graph of square root of negative x. Let's do more, let's do more. How about, for example, we have uh, y equals to square root of uh, four minus x. We know square root of, we know square root of x minus four, square root of, oops, sorry, square root of x minus 4 looks like this. Okay, but no, this is not x minus 4. This is 4 minus x. This is 4 minus x. Not the same. They are not the same. In fact, they are to the point of almost not related. So how do we graph this square root of 4 minus x? We will do it this way will do this way. We start with y equals to square root of x. That's something we know, right? That's the basic function. And then make it square root of x plus 4. What do you do there when you have square root of x plus 4? Move 4 units to the left. Now, square root of x plus 4 is the same to square root of 4 plus x. Are you with me? Okay. So, when we get to y equals to, when we get to y equals to square root of 4 minus x, we basically replace that plus x becomes negative x there. That's when we get the reflection with respect to the y-axis. Okay, so all of a sudden, sketching wise, this coordinate here goes to the right. Okay, it becomes like this. 
that's what the graph looked like. Okay, so the way we attack square root of four minus x, the way we attack square root of four minus x is by doing square root of four plus x first, and then reflect that with respect to y axis. Okay, so originally square root of x, that's what it looks like, right? And then you move four units to the left. This is square root of x. This is square root of x plus four. Now, then you reflect that with respect to the y-axis. So this coordinate here, let me use a color. The yellow color here will become here. Okay. The blue color here will become here. The green color here will stay here because it's already on the y-axis, okay, and so on and so forth. So basically, you will see this is the quote-unquote vertex up one, left one. Up two from the vertex give me the y-intercept. Up three from the vertex give me this guy. That said, let's do a real example now. For example, example seven, graph accurately fx equals to, uh, let's say, uh, three minus square root of four minus x. Oh, that's a lot of work here. Yeah. Imagine how this function will be dancing around you. Okay. The basic function is square root of x. You need to get square root of 4 minus x, right? So for that, you need to get square root of x plus 4 first, which is the same to square root of 4 plus x. So from here to here, move to the left four units. From here to here, you reflect with respect to the y-axis. And then when you put negative in front of that, you reflect with respect to x-axis. And then when you put 3 in front of that, you add 3, basically, you move up 3 units. square root of x, four units to the left, reflect with respect to the y-axis, upside down, reflect with respect to y-axis, and then up three. So four right, up three. That's what it is supposed to be. The quote unquote vertex now is originally zero, zero, four to the left, and then reflect with respect to the y axis. I get this now. Okay, respect, then reflect with respect to the x axis. Now it goes down. And then up three units. So it will be approximately like this. Okay. That's what the graph should look like uh, crudely, not finely yet. Now let's put more detail. We know that's the vertex, then how to get the other coordinates. Down one, left one. Down two, left four. Down three, left nine. That would be fine.
and you can confirm, for example, if you want to make sure that the y-intercept visually here is 0, 0,1, right? The y-intercept f 0 equals to 3 minus square root of 4 minus 0. 3 minus square root of 4, that's 3 minus 2, which is 1. So the y-intercept is 0, 0,1, right? So we confirm that algebraically, which we're supposed to do first. Now, how about uh, to confirm the x-intercept? To confirm x-intercept, we set the y equals to zero. Solve for x. Square both sides. <clears throat> Subtract by four, divide by negative one. is that my x-intercept is negative 5 comma 0. The y-intercept is, y is 0 comma 1. Okay. Now, the thing is, you need to master this thing here, the, the background work behind, behind the behind the screen work, basically the background work. You need to know how the function actually dances and dancing around. Okay, you need to know this thing. Uh, let me do, let me ask you to do one more problem. This time you do it. I give you maybe five minutes to sketch the graph, okay, with x intercept and y intercept known. Uh, let fx equals to, hmm, what is good? Uh, 3 minus square root of x plus 1. I would like you to, I'm sorry, one minus x. One minus x. No, just one. I need you to give me the domain. The y intercept, x intercept, the quote unquote, the vertex, and then sketch the graph. And from that graph, I hope you can see the range. Okay, let me give you five minutes from now. This is for example eight. Sorry, I forgot to record it earlier when I went over that. Let me go on with part A. Vertical stretch and swing is the following. Okay, y equals to c f x. So you multi you have the coefficient c in front of that. Is the graph of y equals to f x? So original graph f x being stretch by factor of C. Okay, you stretch that by a factor of C, of course, if C is greater than one. If C is between zero to one, it's shrink. shrunk if c between 0 and 1. Now, let's do an example first. I will use absolute value as an example. A small example, y equals to 2 absolute 
x minus 3, let's say. How do we graph that? Well, well, absolute of x minus 3 is something we have known. It's basically absolute of x moved to the right three units. Okay. The problem is what is the significance of this two in front of that? Okay. The significance of that two in front of that, you basically multiply, you basically multiply all the y multiply the y by 2. The y, which is absolute of x minus 3 by 2. Okay, so here's what will happen. Here's what will happen in your graphing. Graphing. Originally, it's supposed to be something looks like this. Right, this is absolute of x minus 3. Are you with me? This is absolute of x minus 3. Okay, this is absolute of x minus 3. Now, what is the significance of having 2 in front of that? Now, if you have 2 in front of that, then the vertex stay the same. Now, instead of moving 1 unit to the right up 1, instead of going up 1, you multiply it by 2, it becomes up 2. 2 to the right supposed to be going up 2, multiply by 2 becomes up 4. 3 to the right supposed to be up 3, now becomes up 6. Multiplied by two. Up six should be here, not there. So my new graph will be something looks like this. Okay, so instead of left, uh, instead of only going up one, I multiply it by two because it's up two. Instead of going up two only, you multiply by two becomes four, becomes six. So this is two absolute of x minus three. Now, let's play a bit more. Let's play a bit more. So for example, a small example, uh, fx equals to negative one half absolute of x plus two plus maybe x plus three plus two. So multiplying shrink that, no, it's actually not shrinking it. Uh, uh, no, it's not shrinking it for, uh, horizontally. No, it's actually stretched that. It's actually stretching that upward. So imagine if you have Thomas looks like this, you stretch it this way. So it becomes like this. Okay, it seems to be skinnier though. It seems to be skinnier, but no, it's actually taller. Okay, it's actually taller. Okay, because the movement is not the horizontal movement. It seems to be skinnier, but it's not. It's not. It's actually taller. Okay. Yeah, it's actually taller. Like me, uh, people say I'm tall. Why? Because uh, you can tell I'm Asian, right? Okay, now. Uh, for Asians, I'm actually tall because, uh, let's say this is Asian size, okay? 
my width is actually the same, the same width, a bit bigger, but I'm taller. Okay, I'm taller compared to regular Asians. Now, but, but if I stand next to a uh, non-Asians, let's say uh, most black or most Hispanic, uh, I should say most black and most white, when I stand next to them, they will consider me skinny because we have the same height. We have the same height. Okay, but they are wider. Okay, so for Asians, I am taller, but for non-Asians, I'm skinny. <laughs> Okay, right now, no more. Though. Right now, I'm, I'm actually because of this pandemic, because of this lockdown, I gain a lot of weight. Uh, that's not right. Uh, <clears throat> well, anyway, but uh, to be more precise, no, it's not uh, shrinking, even though it seems to be like that. It's actually uh, uh, stretched vertically. Okay, it's stretched vertically. Now, let's see what happened here. Uh, what happened here is we move three units to the left right upside down and then we shrink that by a factor of one half and then up to those are the movement okay so let's let's uh, tell the story again absolute of x i move to the left three units and i make it upside down so for now it looks like this Okay, now what does that one half doing? It will shrink that by a factor of one half. So instead of going down one, it becomes going down one half only. Instead of going down two, it goes down only one. Okay, and then finally we move up two units. So the final graph will be approximately like this. Not not a regular absolute of x anymore. No. no. Okay. No. It's a we have that one half that make it flatten. Make it flatten. Now let's put it in details. Okay, three units to the left. Upside down. So this is negative absolute of x plus three, approximately looks like that. Okay. Now, however, uh, we multiply that by one half, right? So because of that one half, it will be like this. It will get flattened. I will give more details later on. And then after that, we move up to units. So at the end, this will be the vertex. Okay, now let's put more detail. When I move one unit to the right, I supposed to go up one for absolute value, right? I'm supposed to go up one, but because of the negative one half, I go down one half instead. When I move two units to the right, I supposed to go up two because of the negative one half, I go down negative, but I go down one and so on and so forth. when I go to the left supposed to go up one because of negative one half I go down one half go down two go up two becomes go down one so my new graph will look like this this is what the graph will look like Uh, you can get a lot of details from here, of course. You can get the details from here, uh, like uh, what is the domain, what's the range, uh, x-intercept, y-intercept, so on and so forth. Okay, uh, I will end the lesson today. Uh, the suggested homework from 2.5 will be 
suggested homework from 2.5. Apparently, I don't have a chance to go to go back to 2.4 yet. I do it on Wednesday, uh, on Thursday. I would like you to do number 15 to visualize that. 17, 18. I think that's for now. 18. Actually, number 21. No, not 20. Number 23. Okay, that's for today then. See you on Thursday.